for 13 years to try and fight these three levels of government. That is the only way that we can get our voices heard now, is to go to court. And I don't want to see anybody else going to court to protect their lands. the Nishkalism's government is charging me for their court cases and this is wrong. I am fighting for the future of our people, the future of our children, our grandchildren and those yet unborn and I want to thank all of you who are here, brothers and sisters, my children, to all of you who have joined together. <coughs> I also want to comment on, commend Teresa Spence for her plight. She is now 12 days in, hung, in a hunger strike to protect her environment, to protect what is be, uh, totally belongs to her people. And now it's resonating across Canada and I want to thank all of you for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mike D'Angeli. I was speaking to you in my Somalia language. It's my absolute honor and privilege to stand in the unceded territory of our Coast Salish relatives. Our hands go up to you for allowing all of us to live, work, and play in your unceded territory. This song we're going to share is a very old song. This song belongs to my grandfather's people. My grandfather was Tsetsawit and Niskat. Our warriors, my ancestors, would come and sing this song when they returned home from combat and they would laugh and taunt their enemies because they had survived. In recent history, my grandfather, a veteran of World War II, when he returned home, our family sang this song. My Uncle Bill was a Vietnam veteran. When he returned home, our family sang this song. My two cousins were in the U.S. Navy and the United States Marines, and I myself served 10 years as an Airborne Ranger. When we returned home from our tours of duty and combat, our family sang this song. Not only do we continue to sing this song for our warriors and our veterans, but we sing this song for our residential school survivors. We sing this for our young 
ones when they get educated and go on graduating from elementary school to middle school to high school to college and university. We sing this song every opportunity we can because we are still laughing and taunting our enemies. Residential school, missionization, global policies against us as your first people have not worked, including what we're dealing with right now with Bill C-45. We are claiming victory over this situation. So it's with that the Get Hayek's offer up this song, Go Exism. My dear relatives and friends, the feelings I have inside are really good to be with you here today. And in Coast Salish way, I shared my ancestral name with you. I am Ansakalot. My given name is Carlene Thomas. And in Coast Salish protocol, I shared with you my parents and my grandparents. My parents are Ernie and Deanna George, and my grandparents are the late Lillian and the late hereditary chief and grand chief John L. George. On behalf of my friends and relatives of the Hohotmish, the Squamish, the Humathquiam, the Musquiam, we welcome you here to our home lands and waters of Vancouver. And I'd also like to echo my friend and relative sees points words is that we cannot give up. You look around you today, look, take a look at the person next to you. It does my heart really good to see so many peoples of different walks and creeds and colors and ages standing here for this one woman who inspired us all to stand up, to make a stand that enough is enough. What the Canadian leadership is doing to this country is horrendous. We cannot afford to be idle no more. And my hands go up to those four beautiful women, I'm sorry I can't remember their names right now, who got us going at the grassroots level. The people have the voice and us coming together, gathering together, sharing that strength and sharing that unity only makes us stronger. Those elected leaders, those politicians, they cannot afford to ignore us. I, was on, I went to APTN the other night to try and catch up on the news because I've been really sick the last few days. And I was so upset to see that it was not on cable. I phoned Shaw Cable and they said they didn't know what was wrong because to them it should have been on the it should have been on stream or online or whatever the heck TV does, cable does. So they are scared. The leadership of this country don't know what to do because their ways of governance doesn't fit anymore. We are we are a community. The whole world is a community of people that are connected. We have roots to where we are living now. And we will all stand up and protect that environment that we all live. 
and sustain ourselves from. I was fortunate enough to travel to Rome this past fall. We took in a few tours, real tourists over there, and I was just simply amazed by the architecture that these human beings created. It was just, it, it blew me away. I was awe inspired, I was uh, speechless. Then it made me think when I was a young woman, I used to think, what do First Nations, what do my people contribute to this world? And it came to me really quite early in my life, the way we are, we do not leave a footprint. We do not change the environment we live in. We honor that by environment by protecting it and just taking only what we need. We can do this. This world needs to understand we can go back to that way of living. We don't have to destroy, we don't have to take down every single tree, alter every single river or stream or waterways just to get what we need to sustain ourselves. We need to get back to the basics and we can do it. I have three beautiful granddaughters and one grandbaby on the way. And I hope to be able to create the space for them so when they're my age, they can look back and say, hi, Chika, Granny, for helping us, for creating the space for me to stand here in the middle of the huge metropolis called Vancouver and ask people to stand with us and support Chief Spence and lead all Indigenous peoples to a point where we are all united, that we can live in harmony, that we can live in peace. And I know that sounds all airy-fairy and, and all that kind of stuff, but it's true. We can do that and we can be happy. We don't need great big cars, we don't need great big yachts, we don't need money to make us happy. It's family and our family are also our friends. Our friends become our family. Sorry, I'm just ranting and rambling on now. I think I will stop there and if I have another opportunity, I will speak again. But I just want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for being here and especially to, to Kelly mm -hmm. for the strong leadership skills that she shows and she continue, continuously brings us together. Hi, Sepka, thanking all of you my respected relatives and friends. Oh, Jesus, it's, it's our, our nation's waking up. Um, no, not our nation. Our nations have been stewards of our lands for thousands of years. What we're going to do is we're going to wake up Canada as a nation to wake them up to these, these crazy decisions that are, are, our federal government's making that, that is not only going to affect indigenous people of our lands but all people all people of our lands so what i believe in is is we're, we're gonna we're gonna wake up our nation who's numb to these crazy decisions that's that's what i really really hope for how would you like uh, canadians to participate and uh, not feel that uh, it's just a first nations or an ind indigenous issue that's 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 true it's it's um how how, how would we write letters to their mlas their their mayors their, the federal government come out to these rallies Come out and be peaceful. Bring your children, bring your families, bring your friends. Let let everybody know and let, let the people know. Read on it, look on it. Type in Bill C-45 and, and there, there's brief synopsis of an on sure on the internet. It's like you, you could find out what you need to know and, and find out how it's gonna affect you and how and then know yourself why we're gonna create change. But when you see these things, like I said, come to these educational sessions. That, that's what that's what I say because you know, rallies and protests, they're, they're great, but these, these are educational um, sessions that, we, you know, we, we want to show that we, we should be making better decisions for our future. And I think as Canadians, we would. We would, as, as, a, as a nation of people, we would make these decisions. Thank you. For a better future. I thank the women warriors who have ignited a people's movement that has uh, sparked a powerful movement that gives a strong voice to the people. This has spread like wildfire around the world. And every day we see 
and read about how people are looking to Aboriginal people for hope because we are the ones who are connected to the land in this country. Our blood and our bones are in the land. Our ancestors speak to us. And when we listen to those ancestors, we listen to the vision that they left behind to live in harmony, to live at peace with Mother Earth, to find the balance that we need so that we can enjoy the bounty that Mother Earth has to provide to us. And that we have not only that right, but a responsibility to take care of the land and the waters and the air. The old ones told us, the old ones told us that we have to take good care of everything that belongs to us. So this is our territories. Harper has an agenda and he has taken up ruthless means using his majority government to cow up to multinational corporations, allowing them to come in and ruin our, ruin our country. They've destroyed Northern Alberta and now they want to bring that oil and send it down to uh, the port here in Burnaby, threatening the life of this part of the world. And we're not going to let them. We're going to stop them.